I'm covering here some prerequisites before installation of Siebel IP 2017. Uh, first step, uh, create a local uh, Windows OS account, sysadmin, uh, and log in as sysadmin and set computer name as sandbox. I, uh, this is a, a standalone environment for training purposes and uh, it, it, it just a designated desktop uh, for setting up a Siebel um, environment for the enterprise. Um, sysadmin user is then specified as administrator to be able to install software on this computer. In the second step, um, I installed uh, SQL Server 2016 Developer Edition and SQL Server Management Studio, the latest that was available. Um, the features installed for the database are uh, database engine services, client tools connectivity, and integration services. Uh, during the installation process, because I'm going to install a Unicode database for Siebel, I set binary collation uh, and I picked the Windows OS collation uh, and that's uh, Latin 1 underscore general underscore bin 2. There are several uh, SQL um, uh, binary collations, but uh, I had good luck with this uh, Windows OS collation in production environments on previous versions of Siebel. That's why I picked that. It's important to set that um, during installation. There's one of the tabs on the installation process is the collation of the database. It's uh, um, hard, very hard to do it uh, so that it applies to the master database and all databases after you install uh, your instance of the database. And I specify the mixed authentication mode uh, Windows OS users plus DB users. The next step I will create um, database my Siebel and let me do it now okay so I'll run the statement create database my my Siebel I did already create logins with meaningful passwords so I'm not going to um, execute these steps here uh, till the very end are the steps that are uh, s executed by grant user dot uh, SQL uh, part of your your Siebel distribution, but uh, uh, I'm going to do this by hand so that you can uh, see what's going on here. So th these logins are created. Please give them meaningful passwords, and then I will assign. Once I have the database in place, I will assign several. Uh, um, I will create several statements to create a role, SSE role and create users uh, appropriate for uh, certain roles in Siebel and to grant the SSE role to these users. Okay. Um, at this time I'll also inspect uh, some of the parameters of the database that I created. So let me refresh. It should show my, my Siebel database and um, I'll look at properties here. Let's see here. So the recovery mode is simple. That's what I want for my sandbox environment. Um, there are certain parameters specified by Siebel. So um, uh, auto create statistics is set to true and auto update statistics is set to true. Let's see. So I think I'm almost ready in here. Let me just uh, make sure. So I verified this um, uh, recommended by Siebel settings and uh, also TempDB, I changed, I already done it. I changed the initial sizes uh, for the TempDB space to larger than the default. So let me double check that again. So um, on that TempDB database, if I look at properties here, and files, you'll see that I assigned the initial size of this database as 200 megabytes. In the next step, um, I will, will double check if the TCP IP protocol is enabled uh, for the database SQL. For this, I will open uh, 
SQL Server Configuration Manager um, and um, for SQL Server configura Network Configuration Protocols I'll make sure that CPIP is enabled. I disabled the remaining protocols named PIs and shared memory. For the native client configuration and client protocols I'll do the same. I'll make sure that TCPIP is enabled. And I did that also uh, for 32-bit drivers and TCP IP is uh, clients. It's enabled. Okay, um, I downloaded and installed Java JRE uh, and um, well, I'll set Java home environment variable to the home directory for Java. here. Uh, I also created network image files for Siebel IP 2017 as well as I got the latest uh, patch for IP 2018 and um, that I, these steps I won't be showing in here they are documented in um, in Siebel uh, installation guide once you get the bookshelf uh, from your uh, download. Um, however, I would recommend that you install um, IP2017 in unattended mode uh, and uh, um, you this works. However, for the upgrade, for the patch, uh, the you, you need to run esnic.bat in GUI mode that unattended mode does not work uh, for the update files. That's at least based on my experiences with this. Finally, I downloaded uh, and installed OpenSSL uh, and I need that tool for signing certificates that will be used with uh, my um, sandbox um, environment for Siebel. Um, after the installation, I installed everything to openc colon backslash openssl folder. I copied openssl.cnf file from its uh, initial location with the distribution in openssl bin uh, to just c colon backslash openssl. Uh, and if I don't do it, then I would have to specify an environment variable to point to uh, that file. The next step. I downloaded and installed PDF Viewer. In my case, it was uh, Foxit Reader so that I can read Sibel uh, Bookshelf. Uh, and the last step of these preparations were creation of directories. I created the directory Sibel underscore AI for application interface. Sibel uh, directory, this is where the um, enterprise and gateway software will be installed. I created SiebelFS for Siebel file system and shared this as uh, sandbox uh, backslash SiebelFS and I'll show that SiebelFS and it's shared as SiebelFS and gave some permissions to this uh, folder. It's just a sandbox environment so I was uh, pretty uh, liberal with uh, who can get to that folder. Also create the search store folder. Uh, this is where key store files will be stored for storing certificates. And create a log files folder uh, primarily to store installation response files. <coughs> 